All right, so this tutorial is going to show us how to import more than one model from our Rhino scene into Unreal Engine. And we're then going to create some basic animations, both with the objects themselves and the camera. And then I'm going to show you how to export those animations. The main prerequisites is that you can either do everything in the video that I'm linking here, or you have watched it and you didn't have any troubles. I've got the Unreal Engine scene from last time open, our level. I've also got the Rhino project from last time open. We're just gonna create another surface to, or something to bring into our scene so that we have multiple objects to animate. I'm just gonna call this layer example one. And I'm just going to make a new one called example two. And eventually we're going to put our other surface in it. Let's do like a loft or something. So that's what we always like to do in Rhino. So I'll create a <coughs> curve. And I'm going to make it sort of subtle. Degree three. Like this. I'm just going to create a copy of it. I'm going to rotate it 180. And I might just like scale it a little bit. So we just have like two different curves like that. And then I'm just going to move this one up. So we had that other thing like maybe five meters tall. So maybe let's make this, I don't know, nine meters. I'm going to select the two, do a loft. Okay, it's kind of neat. And we won't rebuild it. We'll just leave it like so. Actually, I might simplify just to get rid of, make it a little smoother. So I'm just going to re try doing a rebuild with 10 control points. Actually, it looks fine, so we'll leave it alone. We can just put the curves on a layer. And we can put the surface on a layer. Okay, so that's good. So this is going to be the next object we add to our scene. I don't know what we're going to do with it yet. I'm really just kind of going with the flow here. So we'll select it, export with origin. We want to pick the midpoint on the bottom here. And we're just going to call this <coughs> blanket. <laughs> I don't know. Ar architecture blanket. <laughs> Something like this. It's like, that's what it makes me think of. So we can look at our mesh preview. We actually have a quite a nice quad mesh here. <coughs> it's not the type of topology I, you would tend to do. We're not going to go into meshing really for a while. So I'm just going to leave it like this and just click OK. In our geometry, I'm going to go import. And I'm going to find our blanket. <coughs> we can build Nanite. And this, so it remembers our settings from last time. We'll click import. Yeah, no smoothing group, but we'll double check it's all good. I'm going to rename it SM Arch Blanket. And one thing we're going to fix is that our Rhino scene is in millimeters. And our Unreal Engine default units are centimeters. So when we're importing our objects in millimeters, uh, to Unreal Engine, they're actually coming in 10 times larger than they should be. So, you know, like this arch blanket is only supposed to be 5 meters tall, but if we measured this in Unreal Engine, it's 50 meters tall. That's why we were having so many problems last time with our depth of field. So, I'm going to take this object here and fix that now. We open it up and we go down to its import settings and for its uniform import scale we're going to make it 0.1 and then we're going to click 
save and re-import. And you might have it already linked. I might have just changed the file path slightly. All right. So now that's our correct size. And for our arc blanket, I believe we have to do the same thing. We go to our import settings and we change its uniform import scale to 0.1, save, re-import, and now it's correct size as well. <coughs> By that I mean if we bring in a cube and place it in our scene, this cube is one meter by one meter by one meter. I just know that from working in Unreal Friend for a long time. Uh, you can kind of tell because if we bring this down to the floor, its pivot points at the center. And if we're roughly at, if we turn snapping on here. Okay, so I'm going to move this up, down. We're at 50 centimeters above the floor with our pivot point here. That means 50 centimeters up, 50 centimeters down equals 100 centimeters equals one meter. I'm going to delete uh, that cube that we just created and drag in our blanket. And I'm kind of going to do something like this and place it above maybe on an angle above our object like that and maybe a little bit on a so if we Hit, I'm, I'm switching between these, which hopefully you've gone through some Unreal Engine basics by now, but by just clicking W for the transform tool, E on my keyboard for the rotate tool, and R for the scale tool. And then we can actually switch between uh, world and local space. So if we choose the rotate one, for instance, it's on world space at the moment. So these Ax uh, these rotation axes are lining up with our x, y, z axes of the world. If we change it to uh, local, they're going to line up with our pivot point axes. That allows us to then rotate downwards like that, which is what I want to do. And then obviously I don't want to want to move straight down, so I can switch that back to the world and bring it down. All right. So one issue we have at the moment is we can only see it from one side. That's because this mesh has no thickness. It, a mesh has faces, and those faces have a normal. And the computer uh, shows you the face uh, where the normal's p pointing outwards. So currently, uh, all of these normals would be pointing like this direction out, and nothing's pointing this way. But we can fix that by creating a double-sided material or we might even be able to check something in the mesh settings itself so I'm going to search two sided no double double sided geometry okay no so this is just for collision so what we have to do is do it on the material end we can add a material here so we can add our material object if we hit this little button here to browse to that material we can actually go control D to duplicate it. And we'll call this blanket. Now we can switch that now to the blanket and open it up. And here we can change our, in our general settings, we can, or in our, our search bar, we can search for two sided. Click that to override and then select this to set it to true. All right, now we have, after we save, we have a two-sided material like this. Now we want to uh, maybe change the color, and I'm gonna change the roughness value slightly. 
I'm gonna go 0.3 and I'm gonna change the hue. this pink color here click save I'm gonna close all of my little extra windows here we have our objects and now we want to animate we have our pivot on this object here our pivot on this object here that's okay for now we can actually manually move pivots in Unreal Engine too let's go into our cinematics and let's create a new level sequence, cinematics level sequence, we'll call this first animation. With the sequencer open, we're going to create a new camera. And I might go through this a little quick because we did it last time. But essentially, I'm going to keep things simple and not adjust the aperture or the focal length or any of that. You can play with these settings on your own. I'm just going to do best practices and rename the camera, calling it CA Quick Animation. And I'm going to go down to its transform properties. I'm also going to hold down control on my keyboard and use the mouse wheel to zoom out on my timeline. And I've created here a 10 second timeline. Yours might be five seconds. So what I've done is basically gone in to the settings part here and change the end to 10. If yours is displaying in frames, click this button, show time as, and change it to seconds. I've also, your camera cuts track might only be five seconds long. I've dragged mine out to be 10 seconds long. And that's, your setup should now match mine. With my camera in the pilot mode, I'm going to move it to a view that I like. Oh, this is quite neat actually. With the reflection. So I'm going to frame it up. And I'm just going to do a simple punch in. To do that, we're going to do the little transform drop down on the camera here. And we're going to add a keyframe to the transform. You can see now in our timeline, we have keyframes on the location, rotation, and scale. And if we drop these down, you'll see that there's a keyframe on each value of the location, the rotation, and the scale. For more information on animation in Unreal Engine or any keyframe animation software in general, it's probably a good idea to do a foundations course on this um, from an expert in animation, not myself. But I'll show you the basics here. Let's just do a punch in over the course of 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do now is move my playhead to the 10 second mark. Or I'll click this button, which will go to the end of the track. And then I'm going to hit this button to add a keyframe. And we're going to use our camera pilot mode again and just move in where we want the shot to punch into. Maybe like there. We'll hit the keyframe button to override it. Now if we go back, we can see our punch in over the course of 10 seconds. Hit play. I'm going to move my starting point in a little closer. And just click that to override that keyframe. Click this to go to the end. And move this in closer to here. And I might punch up a little bit so that now we're now looking at the sun up here. And 
Okay, and then override. See what this looks like. It's going to build an interpolated curve between those two values. Nice. You might be wondering how I've got this appearance that might be different than the last video of my sky. I've just gone into the directional light and I've changed its rotation, pitch, and yaw to make the sun a bit lower to the ground. I could bring this down to negative 5 and it's going to be even lower than that. Maybe go with negative 7.5, negative 6. That's kind of cool. And then we can change this yaw value to get different appearances of where the sun is in the sky. It would actually be kind of neat to animate this. And that's a little bit of a bonus. So why don't, why don't we do it though? It just shows you how you can sort of animate anything in sequencer. Um, we've been doing the camera, but if we go to our directional light and we drag it into the sequencer we can go to our first frame go to our directional light and track its transformation our location rotation you can see that our rotation matches up with the value here I'm just gonna actually zero out our location but for our rotation we're at 14 if we adjust that, we're going to see the sun moving in the sky. Let's let's start it back at 15 and add a keyframe. And then let's go to all the way over to 10 and add a keyframe and change this to like 180. So we have the sun moving across the scene, maybe even less so. It's sort of, if you look here, the sun crosses the scene at around 100, so if we go to our end keyframe by clicking this button, just changing that to 100, it'll look maybe a bit nicer. And maybe we have the sun move downwards as well. So we could go do that by first <coughs> setting a keyframe on our pitch, going to our last keyframe, and just changing the pitch to something even lower, like negative 5 maybe. <laughs> Alrighty. The one thing I don't like necessarily is how we're cutting out the shadow at the end. So I'm just going to adjust the camera position at the end here. We can go down and look at it. But if we have our camera tracking selected and we're at the end, we can just back out a little here and then click that again to make sure it overrides everything. You'll notice actually when I click that, we didn't quite add a keyframe where we wanted to. I believe this is the old keyframe and now this is our new one. So if we play this, we have that little snap at the end. We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is take our old one and just delete it. So we only have the one at the 10 second mark. Okay, let's go to the beginning here control mouse wheel to scroll out quick space bar to play we have this little quick animation now we want to do some animation on our objects so to do that we can select our this was just something I randomly modeled in Rhino and brought in so we're gonna ignore that one we're just gonna ignore or use this one here this guy actually I'm gonna move upwards I'm going to move them up to 1500 and this I'm going to select. This is what we modeled last time. I'm going to drag it in, go back to frame zero. I'm going to set a transform keyframe on all of its location, rotation, scale values. And we're just going to play with some of them. So we're going to start with that at zero and then we're going to go to the last keyframe or the end. And let's double check. We're actually at 10 seconds. The reason it's snapping us not straight away to 10 seconds is because um, it's putting us on, like, it's multiplying the number of seconds by 
30 fps we're at like a half frame at the moment um and so that's why there isn't going to be a half frame in the end um anyways that's you can just make sure that all your keyframes are on 10 or you can just go with the 9.667 or whatever it was before just make sure you don't have one on 10 and 9.667 if you have questions about that for clarity just make a comment below but yeah i'm gonna uh, put a keyframe here Okay, nothing's happening, but if we go to the end and start changing some of these values, our location, rotation, and scale, we can get some stuff to happen. So with our scale, we can do like a little slight bounce maybe, or it's not, it's not a bounce, but let's stretch it out a little bit, just slightly. Oops, and you can see we're at this 9.667, so let's make sure we're at 10. Zoom in, we can drag that one we made over there to 10. Okay, so now we're gonna get a slow growing effect on our scale. On our yaw, we can make it spin around a couple of times. We could say it spins around three times over the course of 10 seconds. We can add a pitch value to point it up on its pivot like this. We can make that negative 40 and then we could add a I don't know, a roll value as well. So it's like doing something on an angle like this. If we control mouse wheel to scroll out, you can see that our values starting all at zero and then we've changed some of them are getting updated over the course of 10 seconds. So when we hit spacebar and play, You just have this sort of effect going on. Um, I don't like the framing of the last shot since I've moved the blanket, so I'm gonna go make sure our camera's tracked on frame 10 here. Just adjust this again. And then make sure that my transform is keyed. Zoom in, just to make sure we're not duplicating any keyframes. Uh, we have this value here and this value here, that's the old one, so I'm gonna move that one across. Alrighty, so I'm gonna zoom back out, go to the beginning. I might just clean up my timeline a bit, so I'm gonna make my, this is my timeline here. I'm gonna make my working range 15 seconds, my pre-working range negative five. We'll set our playhead at zero, and we'll set our uh, end point here, 10 or something. Oh, I guess we can just do this. Click save. All right, so this is our really bad little animation that we made. We can now render this quite simply by hitting the movie render cube button. We can select our I made an, a new config file based on the photo one and I'll show you what settings I changed I'm gonna actually add a new setting I'm gonna use PNG this time so not JPEG so I'll turn JPEG off do we need an alpha no that can stay the same this can stay the same under output I'm going to change that to 1920 by 1080. I've turned off cu use custom playback range because we're going to use the range we made from 0 to 10 seconds. And that is all. I'm going to click save and just overwrite that file. Accept. And I'm just making sure that this is pointing to a folder where we can store our frames. So That was an animation test I did, so I'm going to go our first better animation. And I'm going to select that as the folder or the output directory. Click accept. 
and maybe just double check that we saved this. I know we did, but update the directory in case there's a crash. And we can hit render local. And the first time you do this, it might have to compile cinematic sh uh, quality shaders again, but then after that, you're good. This render goes very quickly. And if we open up our folder, our first better animation, there's all of our frames. Frame zero to z frame zero, two, nine, nine, 300 frames in total. This is what you would e import into Premiere or Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve and turn into an animation. But um, you can also do a quick preview here just by flicking through with your arrow keys if the images are small enough. And over time, even though this is pixelated because it's just thumbnails, it hasn't ha um, had the chance to lo load the full image. But you can see how it's animating at 30 frames per second or whatever we had set it in our sequencer, our level sequencer. Now again, the framing on this one's bad because we have all this wasted space. So let's make like that classic Instagrammy <laughs> look that everyone does. So what you do for that is on our camera, we can just change the crop to nine divided by 16. Double check that our framing is okay for that. bad and then what you would do is click this button here we would change this to be 1080 by 1920 which is 16 by 9 reversed 9 by 16 ratio we can make a new folder and we'll just basically create a new folder called our first better animation portrait select it, accept, render local. And that's going to give us a different aspect ratio that's probably makes more sense for this animation. There we go. I could, you could import that now into Premiere to Resolve and you'll have a nice animated sequence. I hope that helps and until next time.